Setting up an employee in Lizzie for payroll purposes is fairly straightforward other than the fact that our government complicates the crap out of everything. So um, if we go into settings and then go to payroll, we have an employee option here. And so we're just going to go ahead and pick it. The first thing that you have to do is choose an employee to actually work with. So we're just going to go ahead and pick somebody here. And you'll notice that it's pulled in as much information as it knows about them, but it, anything that's missing, we want to go ahead and complete. Now, down here at the bottom, we've got their Social Security number, the date we hired them, their date of birth, the spouse's name if we know it, the date of their last raise, if they got released, what the release date was, and then the pay period, whether we pay them daily, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, and so forth. So in this case, let's just say that we're going to pay them bi-weekly, um, and then we'll put in, uh, we don't, uh, I'm not going to fill all this out at the moment, but you can fill in their social security number and so forth for their reporting. Now, the other thing that we have down here at the bottom is an electronic deposit. And if we click that checkbox, we're basically telling it we're not going to be printing a check. We're going to be depositing it into the bank and having it electronically put into their bank. Um, when we're doing this, what all you're going to do is fill in the bank name, the routing and account number information, whether it's checking or savings, and then whether or not you're going to be depositing the entire balance into that account, or you can deposit a certain percentage into one account and another percentage into a different account. So you can have multiple entries here. So once we set up a bank and we put in the information, we hit the plus sign to add that bank information. Now I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck this for the purpose of this video, and then we're going to hit next. Or, and I guess it's going to force me to put a social security number. So all we're going to be doing is stepping through the, the wizard and there's nine steps and we're going to be filling out the information that, that we need for this particular employee. Now, income items are the things that he has the potential to make. Does he, does he ever get a bonus? Is he hourly? Does he get overtime? Does he get sick pay, vacation? So you're literally just going to say this guy gets paid hourly. He also makes overtime and we pay sick time and he also gets vacation. So those options are going to be here on the paycheck so that you can fill them in. Now I want in this case, I want to make sure that hourly is always added to the paycheck automatically and we pay him $12 an hour. Um, pay limit, if there is a limit, you can fill that in and it'll stop doing payroll for him once it reaches that limit. So we're just going to go ahead and hit next. And the next thing is deduction items. So from here, do we have a garnishment on him? Do we have health insurance that we deduct for his from his paycheck to help cover health insurance, IRA, whatever it happens to be? And all of these items you created when you set up your company. So if you need something here, you'll just go over to the company setup to add it. Now, and I'll just go ahead and add one just to show you what it looks like. And it's kind of like the last screen, you're going to come in, do we always deduct this from his paycheck? What is the amount that we deduct? And then is it a percentage? And if it is a percentage, what is it? Um, and then also annual limit. So we're going to go ahead to the next screen and we're going to say this is the federal tax information. So what things do we deduct from his account? So we take Social Security, Medicare, does he get an advanced income uh, credit, federal unemployment tax, um, and then you can also use extra withholding as a percentage. Um, what is his filing status, any allowances that he has, and then any extra withholding amount that he wants to, to leave out of his paycheck to give to them for free because he's crazy. Anyway, um, so we're going to go ahead and hit the next screen. And actually, we have to pick a status, so we'll say that they're married. And then we get our state information, basically the same as what we just did on the federal. So we're just going to say that he's married, he has two dependents, and if we did this properly, then we should have put in allowances over here. Don't ask why they call them different things, because our government is awesome. And so now we're going to um, fill in the, the other fields. Does he get a state withholding tax? If so, what is the state? And then unemployment state withholding. Um, extra withholding, subject to state withholding, and subject to unemployment. So you just check those boxes if he's subject to those particular things. So we'll go ahead and hit next, and then we've got our other taxes. Now, other taxes would be like local city taxes that they get taken out of their account because they happen to live in the city or work in a city. 
all of the states try to steal as much money as possible, so you just need to fill out that stuff as appropriate. So we're just going to go ahead to next. This is our sick time information, and this is basically just telling us how many hours do they have currently available, what is the maximum of a number of those hours that they can get for each period, and the period is like year to year or however it is that they're that you have them set up. Reset each after a accrual period. So whatever that period is, we're going to reset them. And then we re reset the hours to what? Zero would be a, a good a good example. And then hours to be accrued for each period, for each month or each whatever, how many hours do they get? And so here we've got use a higher date or we can use a calendar date where we set it to a particular date. And here is our accrual period. So we're going to accrue hours annually we're going to reset to zero for example they get 40 hours and this is sick time so we'll say they get 16 hours of sick time basically two days um, their current hours are zero because they haven't started using anything yet um, and so forth so this would be 16 and so it's pretty straightforward what, what we're actually doing here um, there's also information down here at the bottom to help you with filling that out so, and then the same thing for vacation time. Obviously, the hours would be a little bit different, but you'd fill out the, the information for the vacation time. Now, the last step here is something that you're going to do one time, and it's going to be done per employee based on when you actually start using Lizzie for the payroll. So, you need to get their year-to-date information filled in so that the system can print the proper W-2s and stuff for you at the end of the year. So, all you're doing here is picking, so it's prior system's last pay, jet, pay date. So let's say that we the last pay date was on the 1st, and then prior system's last paycheck date, so we paid them on the 3rd. And then all it does is it brings up a list of all of the things that are applied to this particular employee so that we can fill out the year-to-date and the quarter-to-date amounts so that the system can properly print your W-2s and payroll information at the end of the year. So you'll, you, like I said, you'll only fill this out one time but that's pretty much all there is to setting up an employee. Now, once you get one, this employee done, you're just going to come up here and pick the next employee. It'll put you back on step one, and you'll start over there.